Hey, 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 it's W5HRO. I did finally get my new uh, Simpson meters in. These uh, 50 microamp meters that I've recaled with the 100 mega ohm Caddock uh, resistors. And uh, I had to replace those old uh, Burlington, what were those Burlington? I forget the brand, those ones I got from Peter Dahl's old shit out and back years ago. And the one of them on the left was bad, per my old, other videos here, and then I damaged the one on the right, so I got two brand new meters, and check this out. When I hit the PTT, bang. No load. Each one of these suckers is reading exactly 2,400 volts. If it was on that center line just a little bit farther, it'd be 2,500 volts. So uh, that's perfect, man. See, it was just the meters that were bad. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to now. 2,400 volts, 2,400 volts with no uh, no load. Beautiful. So that's uh, that's all done. Uh, when I'm working on out in the garage now, I took a break for here for the past week or so because I got really tired. It's been it's been really hot here in El Dorado Hills. I don't mean El Dorado Hills. We're here in El Dorado County. We're in the uh, Cameron Park Hills. We're in the secluded area. It's real pretty out here. We're just up the highway from El Dorado Hills, but uh, just a couple miles. But uh, I've been working out there in the garage on that, uh, that T368 exciter rack, and uh, holy cow, I just, it was, I spent so much time doing the wiring on it, I decided to take a break, and it got to be so hot in the garage. But I'm as of starting on it again tomorrow. I may do some this evening after the sun goes down. I may go out there again and do some more. We'll go out there in a minute and I'll show you what I was uh, what I was gonna do to it next. But see, there's the 810 still lit up nice and pretty. And then there's a 4400. This one's not plugged in right now. But this deck, the way it is now, this RF deck, I did some rework to it, but it still works. I just need to, uh, I need to plug it in. And what I'm gonna do first is, is when I get the T368 exciter rack finished and get it working out in the garage i'm going to slide it in here and i'm going to start adjusting it i'm going to you know as soon as i get grid drive because the way this rf deck is it'll i'll get i can get grid drive to the grid i just need to light the filament up on the tube and i can get grid drive so once i get the right amount of grid drive from the exciter and get that all working then i'm going to button up the exciter and i'm going to pull this rf deck out and finish that and finish it up so it's going to be uh it shouldn't take me too much longer to get this thing on the air. It's what, the middle of July, towards the end of July now. So I've got plenty of time to finish this up and put my antenna up. I'm gonna stick up an inverted L up about 60 feet so it won't be a complete cloud burner. It's basically gonna be a center fed L. It's just one leg's gonna be going horizontal and one leg's gonna be vertical. That's how it's gonna be. But, uh, oh, and there's the, uh, Per my last stuff here on my website where I mentioned about this uh, speech amp driver, like I said, what I'm going to do is this tube, the one tube there on the far the far uh, right on the bottom is a 6SJ7 mic amp tube. That's a speech amp tube. Then it's going to a 6N7. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two 6A3s, well, this one, and I'm going to move it down here. I'm going to drill a hole out and put it here. Then I'm going to move this 6N7 over here. And then I'm going to uh, put a, a, a 6SK7 for the compression, you know, AVC control. It's going to be right there. And then I'm going to solid state out this uh, rectifier. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to DC I'm going to regulate this this supply because the way it is, this is a, I have a 375 375 volt supply on here. That's really too hot for 6A3s or 2A3s or. 6B4G because they're all the same too. They're not really ever supposed to be run above 300 volts max. And they used to run them when they used to do two because see when you have two tubes driving, you know, two 810s, well, that's barely enough power. So they run them hot to compensate and that's what they did. That's what they did in the Collins KW1 and the Desk Kilowatt. And it was really not, it's not, the tubes don't last. Those 6A3s will not last me. I have two, three more sets, but those things are like... If, if you do find them, they're damn expensive. So anyway, uh, but I'm going to modify this, and I'm probably going to put a heat sink with the, uh, maybe one of those BUX uh, 48A regulators, and I'm going to regulate that plate supply to get it down to 300 volts. Because I don't need that much uh, voltage swing going into the 810s. I don't need that much at all. And I was trying to remember if I did put the, uh, 
the loading resistors from the grids down the ground underneath here, and I need to get my flashlight. I was thinking I may have put some resistors across there years ago because I knew that was a problem. That's always been an issue with driving 810s. It's because of what happens between the uh, the 60 mils of uh, resting current when you spike up to like 500 mils or 450. I think it's 450 mils of uh, at max peak, you know, plate current when you're modulating, and it's it's that one extreme the other it's kind of, it's hard it, the the, two, the grids kind of like they bounce they snap back and forth all over the place and they what happens is the driver transformer in there that drives them that's you know the 6a3s are going that driver transformer down there and uh what happens is that resting voltage that resting bias where you set to the 60 mils when you're not modulating it, it yanks that 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 supply go in the center tip of that transformer. That voltage moves around all over the place between, you know, uh, no modulation and peak modulation, or you know, idle modulation and peak modulation. That voltage yank it. it, it the eight tens yank it all over the place. I monitored it years ago, and I, I, I realized what was happening. So I can't remember if I added those resistors in or there or not. I have to get my flashlight and see if I did that or not. But. Uh, I, I'm going to regulate that supply. My plan is I'm going to re remove that 5R4. I'm going to solid state that guy out, and then I'm going to regulate that supply because that, that 5R4 is regulating that. Uh, it's not regulating. It's rectifying. that This this is the bias supply for the 18 grids right there, and that's the rectifier for it. And I used to have, like, I think it was a 5V4 or 5B4. What? I think it was a 5V4, and it kept blowing the tube up. I kept shorting them out, and I had to pop a 5R4 in there to stop it, plus add a cap to ground to keep the oscillations off of it. it. I'm telling you, man, it yanks that supply all over the place when you modulate, so it needs to be regulated, and I, I plan to do that. So anyway, but I'm so happy I finally got to the new meters in, and that was well worth it. And they did. They came, uh, they're uh, brand new builds from Simpson directly. And I thought the place, I thought these came from Ohio. These came, these, these are coming from a place in Wisconsin. They're being made in Wisconsin now. The problem is you just have to wait eight, it's 18 week lead time to get those in, but they still make them. And they still make all the uh, meters here too. I can get the, the 50 milliamp meter, the 100 milliamp. I can't get an 800. I can get like a 500 mil or a one amp, but I'll just put a 500 milliamp in that. The reason I did that 800 mil because I looked at it, I thought that would be perfect because my, my plate transformers were 800 milliamps each, right, capability. So I thought, well, if something ever shorts, the max it's ever going to be is around 800, so the meter would come all the way to the end, maybe peg. Who knows if something ever shorted and it wouldn't hurt the meter. If a 500 milliamp meter, it could peg and it might hurt it. But, you know, if, if I want to get new matching meters on here, I could do that. The problem is I never could find the cover bezels. Like on the Collins transmitters, they used to have the bezels. I thought if I could ever find the face that goes over these, because I've actually got these meters mounted on the wrong side of the panel. At the time, I didn't have the face covers for them, so I, I just had to do this. What I did was, is I put little thin standoffs be be between the lip and the uh, panel. And I just took a Sharpie marker and I colored all these black and I went over it like 15 times to get it all like it was painted, you know. And it's look, it doesn't look bad, it's just that, you know, it, it, the meters really need to be, this part needs to be on the inside of the panel with the cover over it. If I could find the, if I could, these, me, these three meters all work perfectly, there's nothing wrong with any of them. If I could actually find the bezels for these someday, then I would just do that and I wouldn't worry about buying the other meters, the Simpsons to go up here. But I do want to replace this one here. This is the one for the, uh, the 6A3s. And the resting current is supposed to be around 80 milliamps, so the right place to set the resting current C is right there. The problem is that circuit, this is the general purpose speech amp driver circuit that came out of the old uh, William Moore handbooks. It's that general purpose speech amp driver. That's what it is. And uh, it's uh, the mistake is, is that 6A3s, 2A3s, or 6B4Gs, you need to adjust the filament, the, fil the, the bias on each tube independently, not, to, not together. Not this pot is doing it all, both of them at once, and there's going to be an imbalance when there is. I saw the imbalance when I put the scope on it a few years back, and I just, I switched around the wires to invert it to get it to where the, the hottest side was, was for my positive peak. So anyway, but I need to fix that. I need to redo, figure this out and redo this. Uh, how am I going to make one pot, you know, adjust each one of them separately? 
there's a way I could do it. I could put a switch or something, and there's probably something. There's some way I could figure it out, possibly. But uh, I'll get it. I could put another pot. I could put like a dual pot where the both knobs. This I mean, this one knob turns both pots. But then I'd have to have like an internal calibration pot that that to adjust it to make sure they were both the same every time. I could do something like that probably. Where I have like a variable pot like on the back here, or maybe like right, I don't know, maybe like right there or something on the inside. Little little pot that I can stick a screwdriver in and tweak it to so it balances the one pot up so they're both the same, maybe. Something like that would probably work. So anyway, let me run out in the garage real quick and I'll show you the uh the uh the current status on the uh exciter rack. Holy cow. I should have, I probably should have stopped the video and then gone back outside, but this is okay. Uh, here's the, uh, it's really hot through there. I was, I was finishing up that, that, putting the meters on that panel and wiring it up and I did it right here and I had to put this thing now back in its place. It's too hot, I'm already sweating. It's not that, it's not as bad as it was last week, but it's supposed to be cooler here tomorrow. But here, here's what I did. You know, I've got to insulate the contacts underneath those boards. So I'm thinking, okay, I'll just get the old fashioned fish paper, right? And I'll just put the fish paper underneath these boards. But then I get the roll in, I'm like, how in the hell do you work with this stuff on the roll? I mean, you gotta, I guess you gotta lay it up flat on the table, maybe take a damp rag and dampen it, let it sit there and dry or something. It's just, you, it's, you can't work with it because it's rolled up. And I kept trying to flatten it out. It's just impossible. So I said, screw that. So what I did was, is I uh, ordered a whole big uh, stack of uh, very thick black poster board. See how I'm cutting it out? And I'm just gonna use this thick black poster board. It's good enough. It may not be fireproof like the uh, fish paper is, but it's good enough. And I've already cut a square. I'm gonna take these boards up and I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my daughter's glue sticks and just, you know, do the backside. I'm gonna stick it down to the gray. I'm just going to remove the boards and I'll stick it down there. And I'm going to do it under all these boards so I've got an insulated layer. Because I don't want things shortened out to this because it could. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm getting ready to do next. Then I'm going to finish the wire. Everything else is almost wired. I've got to wire the relay sockets. I have the new relays that are plugged in. So I'm going to wire up the sockets. I do have to drill the holes to mount the... Uh, these are going to be the, uh, the jacks for the exciter and all the connections to the back of the cabinet. So it's the old BNC female flange jacks for panel mounting. They're just going to be mounted like right here by these relays. I'm going to have three or four of them all connected to this one. This is going to be the RF switched part here. And this is going to be the other one for the, uh, the exciter on and off. So that's that's where I am. I'm I'm it just it's just about done. I just decided to take a break for about a week because I was so tired. It was I was out here doing all that wiring and all that drilling. I was dripping with sweat all over the place, and I said, "Screw it! I'm going to take a break." And that's what I did. But luckily, this week it's all going to be a lot cooler. It's going to be better starting tomorrow. So I'll get back out here in the morning. I'll, I may like I said I may come out here and do some more tonight before I go to bed, and I'll start on again early in the morning before it gets hot. So I did, and you can probably see, I do have the, uh, see what I did with the heat, uh, the, uh, the, the standoffs for those uh, pass transistors, see? They're all mounted on there, nice and neat, on insulated standoffs, so it's turned out good. So I'm making progress, I just need to finish this up now, get the thing to power up, start outputting, slide in that rack, and get the right amount of grid drive, I gotta figure all that out, and then I'll, uh, take that RF uh, deck out and I'll finish that up and then I'll start transmitting in the dummy load. And once I get the thing working, hey, it's time to put up the antenna. I'm looking forward to it. What's surprising here here in this area is, well, not just here, not really here in El Dorado County, but there's there are some a lot of hams in this area. There is another Amber down in El Dorado Hills down the highway and there's guys around here, not here in Cameron Park, but there's some, uh, there's some other guys close by. There's a couple in Placerville and a lot of hams out here, man. So uh, it was surprising. And I'm hearing these guys all day long. There's a whole bunch of guys here in California. For some reason, this summer, it seems like 75 meters is still hanging in there till about 10 o'clock every morning. And sometimes it'll come back in the early afternoon, but then 40 meters is hanging in there. And here, here lately, there's been a couple days where 40 did finally die out about... Uh, two to three o'clock and I had to switch to 20 meters, but I primarily, I, I you know, the my two bands where I want to stay is a 75 and 40, and occasionally on 20 meters. 
The thing I don't like about 20 is it's always a one-sided QSO. When you're listening to somebody, you hear one of the people and you can't hear the other guy. Whereas out on 40 and 75, you usually almost you hear everybody that's in the, in the QSO. So that's why I really don't care for 20 meters. It's kind of an awkward thing where you have to like, if you're talking to somebody and somebody wants to pass it to somebody else and you can't hear them, what good is it? You know, <laughs> that's, that's the problem with 20 meter. So uh, that's it for now. And uh, I'll, uh, this is going to be a permanent, the new part, uh, part 15 video. This is going to be a permanent one that I won't remove. I think I covered everything, didn't I? I'm trying to remember. There was one or two more things I might have wanted to mention here, but I think that's, that's good enough for right now. So this is W5HRO to the next video.